The next time the 41st New York would see action would not be until the Battle of Chancellorsville in May of 1863. They were part of Joseph Hooker's army, and Hooker had a grand scheme to smash Robert E. Lee's Army of Northern Virginia. A good plan that should have worked, except for the fact that Hooker's ego got in the way, and he really didn't realize how much General Lee and Stonewall Jackson were not prepared to have their young nation crushed in 1863. I'm standing at the extreme right of Hooker's army. Off into the distance is some woods, and it was from there that Stonewall Jackson's flanking attack would hit the extreme right of Hooker's army. And the first brigade to bear the brunt of that attack would be Colonel Leopold von Giesel's brigade. He was the original Colonel of the 41st New York, and I'm standing roughly in the area where the 41st New York would have been stationed. Very little was done to prepare for a flanking attack because it simply wasn't expected. Von Giesel did refuse his flank a little bit by bending back and facing to the west two regiments, the 54th New York, which was also an all German regiment from New York, and the 153rd Pennsylvania. The first regiment in line was the 41st New York. So when they started to notice deer and bunny rabbits coming out of the woods, the men realized that there was probably something in that woods that should be concerned. But the time of day that Stonewall attacked, the men had stacked arms, they were cooking or eating dinner, they were not expecting an attack. So when Stonewall Jackson's men came out of that woods, the first regiments they hit was Von Giesel's brigade, including the 41st New York. In an effort to try to save themselves from either being killed or captured, most of the men just broke and ran, heading back towards the Union main line. William Southerton, a soldier in the 75th Ohio, recalled this story, that as the 11th Corps was breaking and running, he came across a member of the 41st New York, crouched down hiding in some bushes, and the member of the 41st looked at him and said, Mit God in Himmel, translated, my God in heaven. That was the reaction of the members of the 41st New York, and I'm sure many other regiments that were hit by Stonewall Jackson's Corps. Keep in mind that when Jackson hit, his line was two miles long and three divisions deep. An estimated 20 to 28,000 Confederates attacked this area. The, the, his line was, as I said, two miles long. One mile north of the Plank Road and one mile south of it. This was a massive attack. And unfortunately, in my opinion, the soldiers of the 11th Corps took a bad rap. They were given nicknames like the Flying Dutchies and the Flying Dutchmen and the Running Dutchmen. And in my opinion, it was not the fault of the individual soldier. It really falls, in my opinion, on the shoulders of their Corps commander, Oliver Otis Howard. He was not here. He did not heed the warnings that something could possibly be happening that would cause his corps to be attacked in flank like it was. It is amazing how quickly things can change. At the start of the Civil War, the German soldiers were really looked upon as prize volunteers because a lot of the soldiers who volunteered for the 41st New York and other New York German regiments had military experience. But this one day in May of 1863 changed all that. They went from being prized volunteers to the laughing stock of the Army of the Potomac. And again, I feel a lot of that is misplaced, that the individual soldier does not deserve the blame. It really falls on the shoulders of their Corps Commander, Oliver Otis Howard, and 
on Joe Hooker himself. Following the disaster that was the Battle of Chancellorsville, not only was the 41st New York, but really the entire 11th Corps was looking to redeem itself and try to clear up the tarnished reputation that it got uh, following General Jackson's wide flanking march that hit General Joe Hooker in the flank and it was, as I mentioned, the 11th Corps that took the brunt of that, that attack. Well, as you can see here on the monument, the DeKalb Regiment was here at Gettysburg on July 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. They were not present with the rest of the 11th Corps on July 1st. Um, they were actually still in the Emmitsburg area on detached duty. So they weren't here um, to be routed once again as the 11th Corps was on July 1st. However, the July 1st route was a lot more honorable than what the uh, 11th Corps suffered at Chancellorsville. So I'm on East Cemetery Hill and this is the area that the 41st New York was stationed on July 2nd and they would bear the brunt of Jubal Early's division when it attacked on the night of July 2nd, 1863. Now I want to point out here at Gettysburg uh, the 11th Corps did actually suffer a little bit more of a uh, humiliation but uh, it was very very minor in my opinion. Uh, a couple of regiments to the north of me is the 17th Connecticut and before Jubal Early uh, made his attack they were ordered to redeploy from their position over to my right to help bolster the 33rd Massachusetts and as a result that created a hole that was not filled before Early launched his attack and as a result Early's men was able to exploit the fact that there was a hole in the line and started to charge up East Cemetery Hill. But reinforcements arrived in time and Early's men were forced back. For all accounts, from what I can understand here at Gettysburg, the 41st New York held their own. They did a, they did a fine job here on the night of July 2nd, 1863. Following the Battle of Gettysburg, the 11th Corps really didn't fix their reputation that was unfortunately handed upon them at Chancellorsville and it was decided that it would be best to just send the 11th Corps out of the Army of the Potomac and the DeKalb Regiment soon found itself down in the Charleston, South Carolina area where it did participate in battles in an effort to try to capture that city for the Union and they would be away from the Army of the Potomac for over a year but they would return in the fall of 1864. Also in 1864, the original three-year enlistments were up and many of the soldiers who enlisted in 1861 went home, but some being enticed with furloughs and extra pay did re-enlist. But by 1864, the DeKalb Regiment really did lose its unit identity as an all-German regiment with the ranks being filled by volunteers who weren't German and draftees who were also not of German origin. They would return to the Army of the Potomac in time to drive the Confederates out of the Shenandoah Valley for good at the Battle of Cedar Creek in 1864. They would also participate in the siege and fall of Petersburg in April of 1865. And with the fall of Petersburg pretty much ended the military career of the DeKalb Regiment. But before I end this episode of this all-German regiment, I do want to say, well, originally an all-German regiment, I do want to point out their battle losses. They weren't in many battles, but this is what they suffered during the war. Uh, killed, 54. Wounded, 168. And captured or missing, 63 for total combat losses of 285 men. When it came time for them to erect a monument for their services to the American Civil War, this is the only monument the veterans of the 41st New York placed and they decided of all places and of all the battlefields they served on to put it here at Gettysburg. I hope you enjoyed this brief history of the 41st New York. I enjoyed bringing it to you.
Again, they didn't see much in the way of combat, but they were at some of the important battles that took place here in the Eastern Theater. For Civil War Reports, I am your War of the Rebellion reporter, Brian Thomas Kopak. Until next time, Dankeschön und auf Wiedersehen. And if you like what you saw today, please hit the subscribe button. Give a thumbs up. Also, notify your friends. Let them know about this channel and ask them to subscribe as well. If you like, you may leave a question or a comment below, and perhaps I will answer your question in a future episode of Civil War Reports. Until next time, please keep the history alive.